All right. I, I just want to, again, have this opportunity to just thank all of you uh, for an unbelievable year. Thank you for covering women's basketball. Uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Everything that, you know, we get home, we, we DVR it all and to get a chance to see all the highlights and read all the articles. We really appreciate it. Our players appreciate it because we, we copy every article and we make a book out of it at the en end of the year to give to all the players. Uh, and it's things now that, you know, they appreciate it, but in 15 years is when they really appreciate it, when their kids are asking them, Mom, were you really any good? And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I'll show you. And here comes the book. So I appreciate what you all do, and I know it takes time. And you guys are fantastic at what you do. Uh, now we've got an opportunity heading up to a Final Four, which is quite amazing when you look back uh, to the summer, October, and just the progress this team has made. It's been a journey. It's been a, a wonderful, wonderful journey, not just to watch them grow as basketball players, but to watch them grow as people. And we're going up there with one purpose, and that's to win two basketball games. But we know we've got to win the first one, and we've got a, a big test in front of us with Mississippi State. Uh, Vic's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's done an unbelievable job at Mississippi State, and we know – that we're going to have to be prepared to play. Do you approach McCallum the same way you did Gulich, where it's just kind of, you know, you're just going to have to make your go around you or, or over you? We're going to try to. Uh, but, you know, the more I watched last night, I mean, she was going over people, around people. Uh, she's really talented. She's she's an X factor that, you know, we don't have that matchup to, to just try and, try and go one-on-one. -on -one. But at the same time, you look at everybody else in that team, they, they shoot the ball well. Victoria Vivian shoots close to 45 or 46% from three, 49% from the field overall. Um, and, and you've got four or five other ones. You know, Vic's daughter is a, is a great three-point shooter. So it's one we're going to have to continue to watch some more film, con continue to find out during games. Like, I thought UCLA did some really nice things throughout that game. Uh, but I've always said it's a game of momentum and – Mississippi State got the momentum going early, built a nice little lead, and then UCLA makes a run, but it wasn't enough to get it back to where it was a one-possession game. So we'll take and go throughout different games and, and try to pick the places where teams did some good things and try to implement them into our game plan. Do you think pace-wise they can keep up with you guys? Oh, yeah. Uh, there, there's no question. Uh, they, they like to run also. Their guards are extremely athletic, can play. Uh, we're going to have to make sure we're prepared for their press. They like to press for 40 minutes. They'll sit there, pick up full court, kind of like what we do. So everybody's going to have to be involved in handling the, the, the basketball for us. Jeff, how has is, how is this team been able to digest game plans um, this season? They're great. Uh, you know, it, I've always enjoyed as I go th through each season, each year, not, not just game plans, but being able to draw things up at a timeout that we may have not worked on throughout the year. And they, they do a remarkable job of being able to take something new, watch it in the huddle, diagram it, talk about it, and then go out and execute it. And that, that's what makes coaching so, so much fun because I enjoy doing things on the fly. You find out, you know, what you think is going to work, and then you make a change. Then you go out there and you've, you haven't practiced it, but I've got confidence that these players are able to go out and execute, and that's exactly what they've done all year. And then game plan-wise, you know, as I tell my staff all the time, at this time of the year, you're good at what you're good at, and you're bad at what you're bad at. There, there's not much change in it. You know, so you just try to hide what you're bad at and keep getting better at what you're good at because that's where our tempo offensively is what we have to keep things going at. We've got to keep the ball moving. We've got to be sprinting through things. And then defensively, we're not stuck to playing just one way, which I think is a, what helps us. If you're beating us because we're zoning the, the area on a ball screen, well, well, we'll change. And I think because we're willing to do that, that helps us at the defensive end of the floor. And speaking of defense, you held Oregon State to their lowest point total all this season. This is a squad that just appears to love to play team defense. No, I mean, we, we have defended well. That's one thing that I'll give them credit for. I mean, you know, we, we just played two really good basketball teams. Um, in the regional, and defensively, we were spectacular. Um, 
the ability to stop runs and not let teams go on runs is, is the thing that we have to continue to be able to do. But as I as I say, because you know, I, I remember talking with Gino a lot about it. And we talked about he'd always talk about his defense, and he's like, the best part of his defense is his offense. Because when you score, it puts more pressure on the opponent. Then all of a sudden, when you go on a six or eight oh run, now they're feeling the pressure. We got to score. We got to score. Well, all of a sudden, you get a little tight, a tight, tighter on offense. Now our defense is better because you're really trying to press to score a basket. And that's one thing that UConn's done for years, which I've always been impressed with. It's their ability to score the basketball. Uh, so I, I think our offense, our offensive efficiency, the number of players that we have that can score – has really helped our defense as well. Dave doesn't use his bench a whole lot, aside from maybe like Jazz Holmes. I mean, do you think that your depth gives you an advantage over him? Well, I mean, it gets down to a point in the year now. It's, I thought our bench played very well in the regional in regional finals. I, I thought they, they 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 did great. The amount of time, the length of the timeouts you have now, I, I don't think it comes into play that much. You know, in the game yesterday. Oregon State called a timeout with 5.55 to go in the third quarter. So we got a two-and-a-half-minute break for that timeout. And then I told the kids, you're getting another two-and-a-half-minute break, the first dead ball under five. And I think it was like at 4.35. So they got a five-minute break and played a minute 20. So because the timeouts are so long, it's, I don't think the depth of your bench is as big of a deal. Uh, but we're going to need with – Tierra McCown in the post. We're, we're going to need to be able to play all of our four bigs to keep putting a body out there on her and to keep running the floor to see if we can't score some in, in transition. Jeff, is this your deepest team that you've ever taken to a Final Four? I'd say top to bottom, yes. I, you know, everybody that I put out there I feel confident in. Uh, they've got ability to score. They're able to change, change a game. Uh, Dana, especially as a freshman coming off the bench, you know, she, I think she played 16, 17 minutes the other night, had, the other day had five assists and zero turnovers, uh, hit some big shots. I, I think the whole difference in our year right now is our guard play, our point guard play, Erica Carter and Dana. Both of them present a problem because they both have, have the ability to score. When your point guards can make outside shots, now all of a sudden, you know, you can't go du double off of them. And you've got to guard everybody. And, you know, I, Erica's just been knocking down big shot after big shot, and she did it again yesterday. And then Dana's really been in this gym. She's been working on her shooting. And I, I, I thought she played well. It looks like your previously hit from AD is now going to be the full-time AD here at Louisville. Just your thoughts on this? Well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that was announced yet or not. Uh, <laughs> It was announced. Great. No, we're excited about that. Lo uh, looking forward to working with him. Uh, you know, we, we've had a great relationship to this point. I don't expect anything to change. And, uh, you know, now it gives us some certainty, you know, some security of knowing who is going to be the athletic director. And it's just not for me. I think it's for all the coaches. So now it's, now it's time to, to move forward and continue to build this. Coach, do you think that your team – I mean, are you really catch, are your are your players just really getting into it and getting taken off? Well, they're, they're they're having fun. They're they're definitely having fun, and you're we're playing well at the right time. That's what it's all about at this time of the the season. Is you want to be playing your best come March, and we've we figured out a way to do that right now, and we've got to keep it going for another week. Um, you know, we took today off. We'll practice tomorrow. We'll head up to Columbus after practice tomorrow. We'll, we've got some media obligations on Wednesday, but then we'll continue to practice. You know, we'll put a game plan in uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and before you know, it's going to be Friday, and we'll tip, we'll tip it up and and see what we do. The one thing I do know is we will play hard. It's uh, I've got a wonderful group of young women who compete and aren't afraid to compete, and you know, you can't be afraid to fail if you want to have success. And that's one thing that these players have, have bought into. Because, you know, you've, you've got some players that, that are, are a little timid at times to put in that extra work because then if it doesn't pay off, it's like, God, why do I do all that? But I tell them all the time, you know, if, you, if you're afraid to fail, you'll never get to where you, where you want to get. 
and they put the time in. They've worked on their games, and uh, it's just been a, a remarkable season to, to this point, and we hope it can continue. Have you played, they've been playing a long time. Yep. Have you hit, have you, are you trying to, and have you hit another gear? I, and well, I think offensively and defensively, we're playing as well as we have all, all year long. So uh, if we can find a, another gear for this we, weekend, I'll take it. But, uh, you know, if we can come out and play, play like we did this past weekend, I'll, I'll take my chances too. When along some of those lines, when you're watching them, you know those scores for almost nine minutes at one stretch, and you only have three turnovers in the whole game, and Asia has all known to make a run or what. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, at some point, I mean, I know you're coaching it out there and you're in the game, but does it ever kind of dawn you, man, these, you know, they've taken this and they're really cheating right now? No, it, it was fun to watch, you know. The, the, the fun part for me is when you're able to help coach a game and kind of orchestrate as, as it's going. You, you shot clock and then wear, wear somebody down. And then when we execute, you know, that, that was the, from, from the Stanford game too. When, when, when you've got a 16, 17 point lead with about six, seven minutes left and I can talk to them, hey, at 12, I want to run this. And then we do it and we execute and score. It, it's just, it's, de it's depressing if you're on the other bench. You know, they just took off 24 seconds of the shot clock, and then they're able to execute and finish. So we, we've been able to do that, and that's really important for us because we have to be able to control tempo, push it when we want, and slow it down when, when we need to. Well, yeah, you know, that, that's part of it. I mean, you have to make sure that they, you know, we we talked about before the year started. You know, our goals was to win a regular season ACC championship, the ACC tournament championship, and then eventually get to a Final Four to win a national championship. And, you know, you have to, to dream. You've got to sit there and put the big picture out in, fr in front of you. If you don't, then it's, not, it's nothing that you ever visualize. And we think it's very important that you visualize your success. Jeff, is it? key for this team and maybe for some of the other players that you have in Asia, you have in Maisha, you're not just you don't just have one player that needs to drop 20. You've got a couple that, that can do that. So does that take the pressure off some of the, the other players? Well, I think some of the other players take the pressure off of Asia and Maisha. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's one thing when you're out there and you know you're Maisha and you're Asian, you know you've got Jazz and Sam and Kylie coming off the bench and Dana. It's not – as much, oh, my gosh, I missed a shot. We're in trouble now because if I don't score, we can't score. Everybody on this team has the ability to put the ball in the basket. We're, we're a scoring threat. And that's what's made this team so good is when you've got five or six, seven players that can go out and score, it, it's who do you not guard? You know, if you pick somebody, who am I not going to guard? And, you know, they challenge Jazz at times. With that, when teams go triangle and two or boxing chaser, they, they leave Jazz open, and she has stepped up and made 15 foot pull ups, and get, she gets in the paint, can pass the ball. So I, I've been really impressed with how she's played as well as as well as anybody. Do you think that having that experience at, at Connecticut, you know, went that much further towards kind of teaching them like, okay, you know, here's a bad night, and it's not the end of the world, and the season goes on. Well, I mean, nobody wants to lose. I mean, so it's not it, it's nothing that we sat there and said, hey. You know, we can do this, we, we can do that. What we did is we looked at the game and said, hey, first quarter, this is why we struggled. We had no tempo offensively, and then we rushed things too much. We didn't defend. We didn't follow a scout report very well, and, and they're good. And I, I think we, we, we learned a lot from that, but we do the same with our wins too because uh, we've won some games. Our first game, our first ACC game of the year down at Georgia Tech, we we went on a layup at the, at the buzzer, you know. But I think it's it, that's what's helped this team get to where it is now because we've been in a lot of ball games that there was a lot of adversity, and when you're able to play through adversity, and figure out ways to win, it gives you that confidence for when you get into another situation throughout the year. No, she's. I'm. I'm really proud of her. You know, she had had a rough freshman year because uh, I, I really believe she she had more in us 
in, in her than, than, than she gave us as a freshman. Um, and then she comes back out her sophomore year after being challenged and starts at, at the point as a sophomore. And then she has to redshirt her junior year. But what I'll give her credit for is instead of pouting about it, she got in the gym and continued to work on her shooting. Because uh, she, she was not a very good three-point shooter when she first came in here. But she's continued to work on it and develop her game. Uh, when she misses it now, I'm actually surprised. And her pull-up jump shot, when she gets around the corner, is as good as, as anybody's in, in, in the paint. And she has that calming effect also, I think, on her teammates. When she's got the ball and we're executing, I like her, even when her and Dana are at the game at the same time, when I'm trying to run something, I like to have it in Erica's hand. Just for the fact Dana's a freshman and, you know, it's a little nerve-wracking at times. And Dana just brings a lot of calm to our – Erica brings a lot of calm to our team. And, that, and that's something that is very, very valuable for us. Have you heard from Paul Sanderson yet? Oh, yeah, I've talked to Paul. Yep, sure have. I'm trying, I'm trying to give him to make, make, make the trip up to Columbus on Friday night. Oh, it's a lot of text messages and a few emails from people that, you know, don't like the fact that I said a bad word, and I, I apologize for that. And then I got one that said I, I slapped our kids on the rear end, and, you know, and it's like don't put your hands on their hips when you're talking to them. You know, it's, it's comical. Uh, there's, there, there's haters everywhere. They, they just don't like people to have success. Um, but I always re reply to them very nicely. Um, it's entertaining. Not really, yes. <laughs> hey, Coach, uh, maybe you could give us a little thumbnail sketch of the four teams, including yourself, in the Final Four. Well, I've got two. That's it right now. Yeah. Uh, us and Mississippi State. You've got uh, the, uh, the other two games are tonight. Mm -hmm. So you've got Oregon going to be playing Notre Dame tonight. I think that's at 9. Uh, and then wow. South Carolina and UConn at 7. So... Uh, it, it, it should be two, two great games tonight. So Very challenging. Talk about them, obviously. Well, I don't, I don't know which one. You know, you've got six seed. Now, once we get down to those four, Mississippi State's very good. I mean, they've, they're 39-1 and one or whatever they are. They lost one game in the conference finals. Uh, Vic, like I said, does a great job coaching, has a lot of those players back. They've gone to back-to-back -back Final Fours, which is really impressive because it's not easy to do. And, you know, they, they defend well. They score the ball well. You aren't playing this time of year if, you, if your team's not good. I know you said that earlier your team has had the attitude of not being afraid to fail. I know there's still a lot to go before, but is that sort of the same attitude they have towards the prospect of facing UConn again? Are they chopping at the bit towards that potential matchup? No, we, I, I promise you they don't even think about it. We, we have approached this entire year as play play the one that's in front of you, and that's Mississippi State right now. Uh, there, there, there's too many games left to, to worry about. You know, you've got a South Carolina-UConn game tonight that I think is going, going to be a great game. And then if UConn wins, you're either going to have a UConn-Notre Dame-UConn-Oregon game before we would even have to worry about that. But we've got to just take care of Mississippi State. I told my staff that just before we came down here. I, I, I want all of our attention and focus these next two, two and a half days on Mississippi State. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.